everyone, welcome to another week in our garden. The sun's shining, it's been a glorious week. We've had a little bit of frost this morning, but it was soon burnt away and the sun's come out and it's absolutely beautiful. Downside is, we were trying to get this winter wash on. As you know, the blueberry has burst into leaf, so we can't spray that. The current bushes behind me, they got into nearly bud burst, so we can't spray those. But the gooseberries here, they are still dormant, so I can spray the gooseberries. I've done one side, we'll do this side, and then we'll have to nip down and have a look at that apple tree carefully. And if there's any bud burst, we'll put the knapsack down. Before we start, this is what I'm using. It's, uh, it's available to everyone. It's the uh, Vitax Winter Wash and it's suitable for ed edible and ornamental crops, fruit trees and bushes. It's a good one. Follow the instructions though, you must follow the instructions. I've already done this and put a charge into the knapsack to save a bit of time. Let's get some spraying done. Right. These are gooseberry bushes. There's a little bit of bud showing but there's not actually into bud burst so I'm going to give these a spray it stops, stops the chafer bug later on if we get them a good spray now so let's get the knapsack round the spray I've put on is a big fan spray so there's not a lot of mist coming off it but a lot of spray coming out so it won't take long to spray medium pressure not a lot and then just you can see it's not misting it's just spraying i think i've got a bit of a leak on the head i saw that there you go a good drench make sure you're getting all the cavities and between that's where the bugs will be as soon as you see it running off stop and that's it it's as simple as that to winter wash your fruit. Let's go and have a look at this apple. Right, we're down the garden now at the apple tree. I've had a good look round it. There's, although the buds are beginning to swell a little, um, they're not bursting yet. So I'm going to give it a quick spray over and it'll be dry in a few hours. You see the bud is not open yet, so it's fine. If they're looking at it and there's a little bit of green, don't winter wash it, you'll burn the foliage. Quite a big spray nozzle I've got in, so it'll soon do it, it'll soon soak it. Just give it a good soak till it starts to run and then stop. Get right in where the, the branches are, that's where they'll be in the, in the sides of those joints of the branches, you'll get them. I'll have to get this mending. The other thing I was going to do while we was down here was I was going to re-grease the grease bands. Unfortunately I've run out of grease so I've ordered some more and that'll be here tomorrow and then we'll just nip down and put some more grease on tomorrow, okay? So that's the apple tree winter wash for another year. I'll do the plum, but I think that's a little bit more advanced than this, but I will have a look and if it's beginning to burst, I'll leave it. I've done all the top ones, I've done this. Right, while we're down here, while I'm taking the knapsack off, Diane will show the progress on the beds. I have progressed a little this week. This is the 
garlic that we put in it's just beginning to start and pick up a little now there's one or two gaps that have haven't germinated well haven't grown but that's fine there's a few more this side i put them down here because the ground's not quite so rich down here so they should bulb up better now just before we go to the bottom i'm just going to put the soil probe in to see what the temperature is right we're just taking the soil temperature down here as you can see it's hovering between five and six in the root zone that's quite good for this time of year now we're down at the bottom of the garden now and just show you the progress of the great wall not a lot this week we've had a few visitors this week with it being birthday week so I haven't got quite as much done as I'd like. I have put tarpaulins up to stop the rain from washing onto the the stuff we have in storage, which is the pumpkin frame and the arches for the tunnels. I keep all those in there. I just didn't want them too wet because I actually want to paint them before I use them. Now I'm thinking that because there will be no electricity down this far, obviously, and um, there'll be a shed at the back. I'm thinking of putting a window here that I've got and letting the light go through. So I'll have the three doors and a window to let the light into the back. I really want to use the shed down here at the back for a root store in the winter because obviously it's very cold down here at the back and that will do nicely. This small piece of wall here is actually where the, the lean-to will finish. It has a low wall that it sits on. But as you can see, my levels in here are all over the place. It, was a, it used to be a pigsty and then it was a stable and now it's going to be a greenhouse. Right, we'll make our way up to the shed. On the way, we'll take some samples. For the soil test from bed A, I've done B, C and D as you'll see in the shed. There's just A to take with you and then we'll go to the shed and put them down. Okay. This is bed A. I've labelled up the bottle as you can see. And this is how I take the sample. Now you don't want the sample off the top. It's no good doing that and doing it. You need it just below the surface. So I use a tube and make sure it's a plastic tube. Don't want to be metal and just push it into the root zone and give it a twist just this end half inch or so that's the sample we're after so we get a cane and push it out a little bit takes a bit to do in but it will come out and then i just break that off that can go back now and i take one from each quarter of the plot so I've got four samples spread out over the plot okay let's go here now you don't want lumps good twist there's the sample and just push a little bit into the bottle there it goes up very wet a little bit more I think yes there you go right I'll take two more and then I'll come back to you and this is the last sample now so we've got broadly from all over the bed if we can that'll do nicely they can be washed and we'll take this up to the shed it's got a plastic inside the lid so it's still not touching steel remember you don't want to touch metal right we're in the shed now and um, we're going to put the deionized water which is very important that you use deionized water in these samples give them a good shake and then leave them a few days to settle until the water at the top is clear and that is actually the testing water this is the deionized water you use. It's actually battery top up water, but make sure you use it. Tap water won't do. What you do is just put it in, 
till it comes just above the sample that will give it room to settle okay put your lid on and then nice tight jar this is sample D and then there it is then you just leave it to settle it take a few days and you'll see all the fibrous material at the top heavy stuff at the bottom and the silty bits will be in the middle of the two and at the top there'll be some clear liquid and actually test liquid so there you are there's the soil samples in the deionized water in the bottles and we just leave them on the side now for a few days to settle. We'll show you the progress of that next week. It's usually, it takes about a week to settle, sometimes a little bit longer. The next little job I want to do this week, I want to put some broad beans in. Now we're not great lovers of broad beans, but we do like them, but not in large amounts. So this year, I'm putting about 20 lots are in two so there'll be 40 plants in 20 lots and we'll do them in a single line. The broad bean I've chosen is Meteor. It's a very early one, an old one, so we should have some really nice tasty beans off it. You can soak them a few hours if you wish before you put them in. I haven't done that. I put them in on the ends like that. Two to a liner if you like and then if we give them a good watering top them up give them a good watering in a couple of days they'll they'll be nicely swelled up and they'll soon be germinating the only thing to watch with these and i'll show you in a moment you get quite a few rejects but i'm only putting two in the pot it should be fine So that's those set. I'll just top them up, put the label in, and then give them a good soak. I'll just show you these. Now these are the ones I've actually rejected. As you see, they're cracked, very small. I just chose the nice big ones. So I shall actually discard those. I've topped them up. It's just ordinary potting compost. This is nothing special. And the thing is, I'll give them a good watering and I'll keep my eye on them. I should keep them in the shed until they start breaking through and then probably just put them into the cold greenhouse. We don't want any warmth into them. They'll soon be away. Just keep it wherever you're going to put it. Make sure there's no mice about because they'll dig them up and eat them. If there are any about, put a cover over it or something okay next thing i'm going to pop in are a few sweet peas these are nothing special they were a gift to me they just so i've just put on the label sweet pea mixed i have put them in that bowl and soaked them for a little while oh maybe four or five hours in some tepid water i don't know if you can see this but there's one or two beginning to split already so the little bit of water is a good thing, it helps them on a little what make it was, it's a lovely compost so it was one of the better ones so we're just a little bit near the top, half inch from the top, just press it with the back of your hand up. right then we'll just we'll put them in then space them out as as we can there you go Now they're not all going to germinate so we'll just spread them a little bit. No need to be too too thorough with it. You can if you want. But that should be enough. Well 
So we'll top it up. And then back of the hand, just tighten it. Not too tight though, remember. And they'll be up in no time. They will need a little bit of bottom heat. Like we're going to put some tomatoes in. They'll need bottom heat as well. So I shall bring the propagator down. And put them in the propagator and show you that tomorrow when I'm doing the tree grease. Okay. That's fine. Label. Remember they will need bottom meat. The tomatoes I'm going to pop in as well. There are about one, five or six pots of them. We'll do one and then I'll put the rest in and show you tomorrow when they're all in the propagator. Okay. But I'm not going to put a lot in each pot. I don't don't want loads and loads this early just a few to start us off look and one more that's it now what i'm thinking if we start some early and we'll put some in late as well so we'll get tomatoes like we did last year nearly all season all right i'll just put a little bit of compost on that doesn't need a lot these tomatoes, I always give a little bit of bottom heat at about 20 degrees Celsius, a bit fine. But that will be in there tomorrow, all of them will. I'm going to put some peppers in the same as well. Now we're only going to do a small batch and then the idea being that once they've really got growing, we'll set another batch that will be for later in the season and if we have another one of these long summers we might as well take advantage of it by having tomatoes later as well now i'm just going to pop outside the shed and show you the vine frame that we put up to get the vine higher away from so i'm not banging into grapes all year now before we finish today i'd just like to show you the frame that i built to support the grapevine to stop all this grapes hitting me on the head all summer. I painted it green so it matches the shed and the chicken hut so it'll blend in nicely. Now later in the spring over the next few weeks I shall extend the frame at least two or three meters that way and I'm going to plant another vine up that end a white grape or green grape if you like. That's the vine that we've bought. It's superior seedless white vitis or white grape. It's not very big at the moment but if it shoots away like this one we'll have no trouble getting that up. Now when we purchased the greenhouse there's a lovely lady there and she had a most beautiful Daphne at the side of the greenhouse and we were both taken with it it's variegated it's got a lovely scent so we decided that's what we want around the front of the house can you imagine it in the evening when the scent's coming off it's going to be stunning so we bought one yeah. now this is the plant this was the biggest we'd actually get it's quite quite difficult to find it's a Daphne Adora Oreo marginata, new winter Daphne. It's in a nine centimeter pot, which we've potted now, so it won't potting again and keeping a little one. The scent from these flowers is unbelievable, and if you imagine it when it gets to a couple of feet high and it's covered in flowers, when it's covered in flowers in the spring, it'd be stunning. There is a slight downside with Daphne. I don't know if you know, but Daphne, the sap from, from the Daphnes, all the plant is toxic. So if you've got children, this is one to avoid because I don't want to be chewing these, you'll have no end of problems. So it'll go in the front garden, in the sunshine, but also away from the chickens because they might just come and have a little bit of a peck on it. That's toxic to chickens at all, but I won't give it a chance. But it's definitely, Daphne's are definitely toxic to us. 
okay so if you're buying one be very very careful if you've got children now that'll be it for today uh, I'll get on with these jobs we've got to do and I'll see you tomorrow and I'll show you the propagator and put in that uh, tree grease on that I've run out of okay see you tomorrow Bye. Hello and good morning. Saturday morning today. Now the tree grease didn't arrive. It's not arriving until Monday so we'll do it on next week's. Now I put the seeds in that we said yesterday into this little propagator. Don't need the light yet. There's nothing showing to put the light above. I have put, uh, I've put it on 20 so it's 20 degrees celsius in the bottom which is lovely and warm it's more or less as we set yesterday and i've just put a few chili peppers in there was only four in the packet and the uh, a couple of cucumber fem spot because i want to go twice with those so we can get a longer cropping period now if you're putting your seeds on the windowsill to germinate to avoid them going straight for the light if you get a bit of tin foil so your windows here and you just put your tin foil at a bit of an angle like that the light from the window will give give you light both sides on its reflection and put your seedlings up straight if they're too warm they will tend to draw a bit upwards but at least they'll be they'll be straight as soon as they get one or two germinating I'll pop the light on and we'll keep that on for 12 hours a day so we can get some nice seedlings up we've done plenty here for now now as we get towards the end of the month which is not long now and especially into next month We'll start putting the seed in ready for the season but I don't want too many too soon so I do them in small batches so I can keep keep them going through the system next week I'll show you the overwinter geraniums etc and fuchsias that have managed to overwinter in the shed so we'll pop the lid on this so to keep it that little bit warmer It has a thermostat cable in it so it switches on and off as it wants. It's on at the moment. If it gets warm in the day it'll just shut down and then come on tonight when it's a little bit cooler. So that'll be it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. Many many thanks for watching. Thank you for subscribing. We do appreciate it. And hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye now.